hey guys welcome to digital screening channel on youtube and as usual i request you to please subscribe to this channel now let's jump into today's uh, topic which is uh, deep learning training for facial emotion detection this is going to be a straightforward tutorial especially if you have watched my previous videos and if you are uh, already familiar with uh, you know the deep learning training for classifications this is a relatively straightforward video then why am i recording it well if you watched my previous video we did look at facial detection using OpenCV. and the eventual plan in the next couple of videos is to build a process for us to connect or first of all a webcam to a raspberry pi for example and uh, deploy a trained model that detects the faces and not just the faces but also the emotion age and gender so we need trained models for those so we can convert them into tensorflow light that can be deployed onto these devices how do we get that this is a step towards that process detecting or training for emotion detection in the next video we are going to talk about age and gender detection two other models so let's jump in to see where we can get this data set and how we can train this so let's jump into our spider ide okay so here we are first of all uh, let's have a quick look at the data set i'll provide the link underneath as part of the description and you'll also get access to this code anyway so you can uh, you can get the data set from this uh, from this link so once you click on the link it takes you to this kaggle page where you can get this for fer 2013 data set i'm pretty sure there are other data sets that you can use but this is the one i chose to use and these images are i believe 48 by 48 pixels so they're kind of tiny yeah which means our input image, we have to resize them to 48 by 48 uh, to do these predictions. Uh, so the accuracy may be a bit compromised because if you don't have relatively high resolution images, then certain emotions can be a bit uh, difficult to discern. So the emission, the, the, the images, sorry, uh, come in various folders. I think I used pretty much everything. Let's go ahead and look at the train angry disgust fear happy neutral face sad face and surprise face right so these are uh, uh, various uh, folders that we have there aren't many images under disgust so the prob probability no matter how much you try to make your faces uh, you know in front of your camera disgust is a tough one to tough one to predict uh, and uh, most of the time you'll end up with uh, neutral faces happy faces are very easy because you have a lot of data right there and sad is also easy because you have enough images but others you see uh, there is a clear imbalance when it comes to disgust and maybe surprise and angry a little bit less but still quick understanding right there so there is a uh, train directory and there is a test directory i just downloaded this okay Again, this is only 54 megabytes because these are all 48 by 48 uh, pixel images, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, 48 by 48 pixel images. Okay, so that's the data set. And now let's jump into the code. These are all the libraries that I'm going to use. So let us first, again, I forgot to change the directory. Let's uh, make sure we are in the right directory right there. Yep, facial emotion detection. And let's clear the screen okay <laughs> there we are let's go ahead and run these lines again this is basically uh, using sequential model method in uh, keras to create a to define my model and i'm going to use dense layers dropout flatten con 2d and max pooling no other fancy uh, you know uh, fancy layers or anything just with these i'll put together a basic model that can actually be trained to detect these uh, or to classify into these uh, these uh, various classes my image height image width 48 by 48 and because these images are small let's define a batch size of 32 i normally do 16 or uh, you know batch size of 16 ish but uh, because these are smaller we can even go to 64 if you want uh, now you can load these images in memory but i think there are uh, quite a few images so let's go ahead and define a uh, generators by the way i have already trained my model so don't worry we are not going to go slow i'm just going to explain the key aspects and then we'll move forward so i defined a data generator right there where we are rescaling the images the images are all rgb they go uh, are actually the images are probably not even rgb they are uh, grayscale images we'll find that out but either way 
it doesn't matter. We are dividing the pixel value by 255 and then defining our rotation and shear range and all that. We can do all of these operations because this is not semantic segmentation. In semantic segmentation, you have to be careful. When you do these shears and others, you have to do exactly the same to your mask. But then if you do that to your mask, your mask pixel values may be interpolated and you'll probably get wrong results. So, so uh, but for classification, I don't care. I can do all types of operations. So I define my train data generator and validation generator right here. So let's run these lines. Again, I defined, I talked about data augmentation many times in the past, so I'm not even gonna spend any time there. Now I'm defining, uh, let's uh, put some space right there. I'm defining class labels as angry, disgust, fear, happy. Otherwise, without the class labels, these are just uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So at the end, when we print out the result, we wanna see uh, what the prediction is and not just 0, 1, 2, right? So that's why I defined class labels right there. Now let's uh, go ahead and extract a few images, right? I mean, when we defined our uh, train generator validation generator right there, uh, in my train generator, let's go back one step. My train data gen and my train generator right there and my class mode equals to categorical, right? So when I call that train generator, it's going to give me both image and label. So let's go ahead and call that, which means uh, I'm going to use train generator dot next and it's going to give me a batch size of images, which is 32 in our case. So let's do that. And in a second, you'll see that my image is 32 by 48 by 48 by one. Yeah, these are all grayscale images. So we are, or we are reading them in grayscale right there. So we have 32 images, each 48 by 48 by one. And let us print these images and also print the title right there. That's the reason why I have class labels here. So I can check the class labels and then uh, print it out when I print the image. Why am I doing this? Again, this is a sanity check. I just wanna make sure that the images are correctly you know, uh, loaded. So that's a sad face apparently. Uh, that's... <laughs> Why am I getting only sad and fear? I uh, let's see, that's a neutral face, yeah. So you can see there are various ages, where uh, you know, a couple of genders right there, and you can uh, you can see uh, different races, obviously, and uh, yeah, I think uh, I think we got everything lined up fine. Now we define our model again. I defined uh, two convolution layers, max pooling convolution, max pooling, convolution, max pooling, and then I flatten it to get one dense layer, and then the final output layer with seven neurons. Obviously we have seven classes, yeah? So let's go ahead and define this model. Like I said, this is pretty straightforward multi-class classification problem, that's it. If you ever worked with CIFAR 10 dataset, very similar, except you have seven classes, that's it. Okay, now, uh, why am I defining all of these, even though I'm not going to train, because when we, when we test this, at least we have all the data ready. That's the only reason. Okay, so I have trained this. I already saved this. Uh, in fact, where did I save it? Uh, I just want to make sure emotion detection. Yeah, there is an emotion detection 100 epochs file. So I just saved it in the same directory as my file. So let's go ahead and load that model. So let's import uh, load model and let's load this model compile equals to false we are not training this further so uh, compile equals to false and let's go ahead and load it why load it because I just want to predict on a couple of things and then make sure okay this is working fine so again like I said this tutorial is all about training this model getting the h5 file that we convert to tensorflow light in one of our upcoming tutorials and then the fun begins okay so uh, now let's uh, generate a batch of images, uh, testing images. You see, that's why I'm using validation generator right there. It should give me 32 images from the validation data set. And then let's go ahead and do the predictions on our validation <clears throat> data on these 32 uh, images. So let's go ahead and do model.predict. And uh, the predictions should be done here. Yeah, we have 32 by seven. Why seven? Because this is one hot encoded we need to get uh, argmax. That's exactly what we are doing right there. For predictions, we are going to do argmax. For labels, we are going to do argmax. So it converts from one hot to basically a prediction. Yeah, that's it. And uh, let's go ahead and print the accuracy between these two. And 62.5%, okay, that's not great. Maybe you can come up with a better, you know, better structure up here and then train it a bit more. 
and so on but uh, for now you know uh, we have a trained model that's it and it's giving us 62.5 percent accuracy now if you wonder where the issues are you can print out the confusion matrix here is the heat map of the confusion matrix obviously it's doing a great job for whatever that class is like number three but uh, for others it's not that bad actually i mean there is like some misclassification it's just that i don't have a lot of testing data uh, i only have 32 images so maybe for validation you can load a batch of uh, you know 200 or 300 and then check the accuracy out of 32 this is the accuracy i'm getting so if i actually get the next batch just out of curiosity let's go to the next batch it loads the next 32 and then predictions and let's go ahead and do all of these and see what we get so 68.75 now i'm getting higher accuracy on this next batch this is why you need a lot more data to test your i'm pretty sure on average the uh, the accuracy is probably about 70 percent okay so now let's define our class labels again why because we are going to predict a few random images and print them. Uh, the guy is obviously afraid, or girl I can tell, uh, from this 48 by 48 pixel image. So that's a happy face for sure. Originally sad or predicted is sad, right? We are doing not bad actually, you see? Uh, oh, even with disgust, we are doing pretty good. So original label is disgust and our predicted label is disgust. Now I wonder where the issues are. What is that 30%? where we are going wrong. Okay, so here apparently it says the original label is neutral and we are predicting sad. In fact, I see that this guy is angry over there. Oh, this is sad, we predicted sad. Neutral, predicted neutral. Okay, this is sad and we are predicting happy. Uh, Johnny Depp, probably that's the happiest he's ever gonna be. So uh, anyway, let's end on that note. And uh, what we have is a working model to detect emotions. This is very, like I said, a classic multi-class classification problem. In the next tutorial, let's do almost similar, but with uh, age and gender. And the one after that, like I said, the fun begins where we put everything together, the facial detection and the emotion, so we can uh, detect the emotions in real, real time. So please stay tuned for that. Subscribe to this channel. Thank you.